on that. That's a ring of my profession. You don't know nothing about that. Okay, we can we get a close up on that? Yeah, yeah. What? You don't know nothing about what that. is the profession? Yeah, which profession are we talking about? Just look at it. Is it a legal profession? Of course it's legal. It's a ring of my profession. I'm trying to read it. Okay. Right, it's too many diamonds. Ah, yeah, that's it's too bright. Small, it's too bright. bright. Go ahead, anyway. Oh, Mason, are you a Mason? Of course I am. Okay. You, 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 <laughs> and the secret serum. <laughs> well, you might as well put your pinky out when you drink your drink. Of course I am. Put your pinky out. You know, from the secret serum. <laughs> Stop it. The and the Everyone wears it. Anyway, the Clippers. The Clippers. But that is impressive, Mr. O'Neill. I don't have a chance. Anyway, so the Clippers. Oh, yeah, I have four. Those he doesn't wear. Those he doesn't wear. The Clippers. Yeah. As I was blinded by success. It's the world's most well-known secret society. Rich with symbols and ritual, it's a source of legends. Welcome to the world of Freemasonry. True or false, the Masons are a secret society. No, it's, that's false. UCLA history professor Margaret Jacob is one of the world's leading experts on Freemasonry. True or false, Freemasonry is a religion. No, it's false. True or false, Masons were behind the American Revolution. False, false, false. Okay, but what about on the dollar bill? The, the eye oh, yeah, and the, the pyramid, eye. I yeah. mean, that's Masonic, right? No, it's, it, 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 everybody says it's Masonic. In fact, it's a commonplace in the 18th century, that particular set of symbols. True, Freemasons laid the cornerstone of America. Well, at least some of its most iconic structures. So what is Freemasonry? Simply put, it's the world's oldest and largest fraternity. Even while blindfolded, try to concentrate on what you are asked, what is said to you, and what is happening around you. Everything will be explained to you in later sections of the degree. When a candidate comes in through the door, he's blindfolded because symbolically he's in a state of darkness because masonry is all about moving from darkness into Masonic light. That, it's a fact. In my last video, I discussed breaking out of the matrix. This is something that must be done today. Come out of the strong delusion. When waking up, you'll find that there are so many things that need to be discussed and relearned. But the thing is that in order to proceed in understanding many of these topics that have been concealed from us, we must understand a very big subject. Now this topic is something that needs attention, but unfortunately, it is very hard to break down in fullness unless you are someone that has been exposed to their secrets and then has come out from them and that has chosen to risk your life in exposing them. It's also very hard to learn because of the amount of disinformation and lies that are told. Like recently, I went through a book that was covering this topic, but it was filled with so many small lies and false statements, it was very hard to read. This topic is also very hard to tackle because of the structure of the organization and the way they reveal their information and or secrets. There are degrees and levels within the organization. And you will find that personally, when those that will tell you that certain information is not true, they are saying this only because they are not initiated in that degree that gives them that access to the full understanding, or they are just trying to keep you from the truth. They are lying to you. Either way, because they are so strong in concealing the secrets and the truth, this is why we only know what they want us to know. Again, it's very hard breaking this group down. I am not a Mason and I have never been one. No one in my family has ever been one and I do not know anyone personally that can provide me with any additional knowledge that I could use. But in the end, it does not matter because they still need to be discussed. You cannot live in this world and understand anything about the matrix or the secret world that is hidden from the masses without understanding this organization. And in order to go over other topics, we must cover this one. You must understand what Freemasonry is. So we're going to tackle it now. Let's begin. Freemasonry is really one of the most misunderstood organizations. It appears on the surface to most Masons and non-Masons alike to be a friendly, fraternal organization, which meets the fellowship. Their organization, including the Shriners, are responsible for public good and many charities. If you ask the majority about Freemasonry, most people will tell you that they have heard of them, but they can't tell you much more than that they are a secret society and that many U.S. presidents were a part of them. 
That is pretty much the extent of the mass population's knowledge of this group. They know they exist, but they don't know why. They may have watched documentaries on the History Channel, but those documentaries only give a bunch of half-truths and make general accusations that they never proved to be true. So it builds no conviction either way. But within an organization that has such a long history, that so many notable people throughout history from all aspects of life are claimed to be members of, this should be a subject that the majority of the world understands, especially since they have so much influence over our daily modern lives. What an actual Freemason might tell you about the organization is that Freemasonry is a fellowship of men, and men alone, who are bound by oaths to a method of self-betterment. The method centers on rituals performed in isolation from the outside world, in which symbols stand for moral qualities. They will be proud to tell you and emphasize that they are brothers of an organization that boasts members such as George Washington and no fewer than 14 other presidents of the United States, at least five kings of England, Benjamin Franklin, Winston Churchill, Paul Revere, Buzz Aldrin, Wolfgang Mozart, golfing legend Arnold Palmer, entertainer Harry Houdini, business titans like Henry Ford and Walt Disney, singer Nat King Cole, boxer Sugar Ray Robinson, rapper Jay-Z, and basketball great Shaquille O'Neal. And listen, that's a very small list that I'm giving you. These are just some of the names that have shared and not concealed their membership to this organization. But it can easily be seen that many at the top of their game and at the highest levels of our modern day society are a part of this organization. But that doesn't mean that everyone at the top are Masons. Well, today, the way this world is though, that statement is getting harder and harder to validate. The members of Freemasonry are in a very diverse range from the likes of tradesmen, merchants, lawyers, actors, Jews, Africans, and those that have descended from the Atlantic slave trade. Today, there are approximately 6 million Freemasons around the world, with 1.1 million Freemasons in the United States and 400,000 in Britain. It's said in the past that numbers were much greater. But again, the average person knows very little about them. And it's ironic too, because the activities that go on in private behind the doors of their lodges have helped spread many of the values many people of this world today associate with modern public life. Values like living by a code of religious and racial tolerance, democracy, global politics, and equality. On another note, Masons have helped shape things like imperialism and global war, the building and breaking of states and nations, dictatorships, and religious fanaticism. If you speak to a Mason about it, they may tell you that we are not a secret society. We are a society with secrets. And that's true. Because honestly, how can an organization this large with so many notable members ever be a secret? It's not that they are secret. It's just that what they believe in and are purpose with is concealed and hidden. That's the secret. So let's get past the introduction of them and go into who they are. Let me cover this first. This may surprise many people because for the majority, Freemasonry is looked at as an organization, as a secret society. But it is in fact a religion. I will prove this later. This is why it is in the History of Religion series. Freemasonry goes back to the mystery religions of ancient Babylon. You see, the History of Religion series stopped at the last episode, part 69, because in order to discuss the other lies of this world, Freemasonry needed to be broken down. And Father did not give me the words to complete the task, so I did not attempt at the time. But it really is time to bring some clarity around this religion slash organization. Now, history likes to claim that Freemasonry came into existence in the early 18th century, around the year 1717. I believe that's the claim. But this is not correct. Freemasonry is the ancient mystery religion that has been passed down over centuries since ancient Babylon, where we find Nimrod and Tammuz. I covered this in part one. This knowledge didn't go away for thousands of years and come back in the 18th century. No. To understand better, let's go back to part 66 of this series. This is when we spoke about the Knights Templar. They were also known as the poor fellow soldiers of Christ and of the Temple of Solomon, and also known as the Order of Solomon's Temple. The Knights Templar, or simply the Templars, 
or a Catholic military order founded in 1119. They were headquartered on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem through 1128. When they came back to Rome, they amassed untold power given by the Pope. They were claimed guardians and protectors of the Holy Grail. These are two subjects I covered in detail in parts 66 and 67. If you have not watched these episodes, you should go back and review that information. The Templars were presented in history as Christian soldiers who fought for the glory of Christ. But the truth is that there was a very dark side to them that was done in secret. They were sorcerers, magicians, and alchemists. Many people that lived during their time shunned them, believing them to be in league with unclean powers. They were the beginning of the known black magic-based organizations that were brought to the open. Although individual knights were bound to a vow of poverty, this did not prevent the order from amassing wealth and on an unprecedented scale. The temple received in abundance, but as a matter of strict policy, it never gave. During the next hundred years, the Templars became a power with international influence. They were constantly engaged in high-level diplomacy among nobles and monarchs throughout the Western world and the Holy Land. So what happened to them? In the early 14th century, the French king, King Philip, moved against the Templars. He branded them as devil worshippers. At dawn on Friday, October the 13th, 1307, all Templars in France were to be seized and placed under arrest by the king's men. Their common houses placed under royal sequestration. Their goods confiscated. It was on this day, October 13th, that the Templars were burned alive. And this is where we get the famous Friday the 13th from. Now, it is said that not all Templars were killed during this Friday the 13th seizure. There is persuasive evidence that there was some sort of organized flight by a particular group of knights, virtually all of whom were in some way connected with the order's treasurer. The treasure of the temple, together with almost all of his documents and records, disappeared. The papal bulls that King Philip sent dissolving the Templars was never proclaimed in Scotland, and therefore the order was never technically dissolved in Scotland. Many English and French Templars found a Scottish refuge but they were no longer in power in the open. You see, this information is important to know because this is where we see the formation of Freemasonry. Many Freemasons claim the Templars to be the organization's predecessors. Certain Masonic rites or observances claimed direct lineal descent from the Templar order, as well as authorized custody of its arcane secrets. Certain Masonic lodges have adopted the grade of Templar, as well as rituals and appellations supposedly descended from the original order. Follow and understand this. The black magic and secrets of the Templar went underground after the dissolution of the Templars by King Philip, and they reorganized over four centuries, passing down their knowledge, later coming back out of the shadows with Scottish Rite Freemasonry. And this is a good starting point to understand them from. Now, let's talk about their beliefs and beginnings. Just like with the Templars, Solomon's Temple is very important to Freemasonry. Let's go back to part six of this series. Now, many of us who have read our Bibles know of King Solomon, son of King David. We know the history of him according to the Bible. But the other side, who are actually enemies of the Bible, they have a very different view on Solomon. Believers in the Bible see major mistakes done by Solomon that had consequences for all of Israel. But among the other nations, King Solomon is praised and made no mistakes. Among the Eastern nations, King Solomon is esteemed as a great magician who had great power over the spirit world. It was said and claimed that he gained his power from Satan, who gave him a ring of power with his symbol on the ring. This symbol is known as the Seal of Solomon also known as the Star of David. I cover this on part three of my symbol series. The Seal of Solomon is a hexagram and hides complex meanings, but it is a symbol highly used in witchcraft. The symbol was supposedly used on Solomon's ring and gave him the power to understand and communicate with animals and to conjure up spirits to do his bidding. Kabbalists and alchemists are very fond of this symbol. It's also hidden on the U.S. dollar. It's not a symbol of Elohim 
the God of the Bible. The point of this knowledge is that from Solomon's mistake, the glory of ancient Israel went downhill. And Lucifer used Solomon's disobedience in creating and establishing his doctrine for future worship of him by his own name. Let me explain where Solomon fits in. In reference to Freemasonry, according to the Freemason Dictionary, the Temple of Solomon plays a very important part. It is said in Freemasonry that Solomon, Huram, King of Tyree, and Hiram Abif presided as Grand Masters over the lodges which they established. It is said that symbolic degrees were instituted and their systems of initiation were invented, and from that period to the present, Freemasonry has passed them down. It is said that almost all the symbolism of Freemasonry rests upon or is derived from the Temple of Solomon in Jerusalem. Each Masonic Lodge is and must be a symbol of the Jewish Temple. Each master in the chair represents King Solomon. And every Freemason is a personation of the Jews who worked on the Temple. It's important to understand that Satan wants to be like Elohim. So he must use the things of Elohim, but pervert them. This is why there will be an Antichrist. I really hope it starts connecting that Satan's primary goal is to pervert the things of Elohim. He's not just making up his own doctrine, but it must be a perversion of Elohim's, the opposite of it. This is why the building of the third temple is so important to this new occult age. This is a goal of Freemasonry, and the events transpiring today are being orchestrated by these men within this structure of power. Freemasonry and the occult all use Solomon as a symbol for their rebellion, particularly because of how great and important Solomon was and what he did. This history is very important to understand. Again, like I said earlier, Freemasonry is not just an organization. It's a religion. The goal of the religion of Freemasonry is to spread the light of Freemasonry to the world. I will explain deeper just exactly what that light is, but let me define it based on Albert Mackey's Masonic Dictionary. He writes this about light. Light is an important word in the Masonic system. It conveys a far more recondite meaning than it is believed to possess by the generality of readers. It is in fact the first of all the symbols presented to the neophyte and continues to be presented to him in various modifications throughout all his future progress in his Masonic career. It does not simply mean, as might be supposed, truth or Sodom, but it contains within itself a far more abstruse, meaning difficult to understand, allusion to the very essence of speculative Freemasonry and embraces within its capacious signification all the other symbols of the order. Freemasons are emphatically called the Sons of Light because they are, or at least are entitled to be, in possession of the true meaning of the symbol. While the profane or uninitiated who have not received this knowledge are, by a parody of expression, said to be in darkness. Okay, so he simply said that what we may know to be light isn't what they are referring to. And from the time a new member becomes a Mason, he is in possession of the light. And as he goes through degrees, he goes through a deeper understanding of what this light is. It is the Mason's job to spread this light, and those not Masons are in darkness. So hold that thought, because we're going to get deeper. Now, there are many books that provide information about Freemasonry. But I believe, in understanding their beliefs, there is no better book to start from than from 33rd degree Freemasons, Albert Pike's. Albert Pike is the only Confederate military officer or figure to be honored with a statue in Washington, D.C. Albert Pike wrote an 861-page volume of lectures on the esoteric roots of Freemasonry, specifically the 32-degree Scottish Rite. The book is called Morals and Dogma of the Ancient and Accepted Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, or simply Morals and Dogma. It is a book of esoteric philosophy published by the Supreme Council of the 33rd Degree Scottish Rite, which was first published in 1872. Until 1964, this book was given to every Mason completing the 14th degree in the southern jurisdiction of the U.S. Scottish Rite Freemasons. There are 32 chapters, each discussing the philosophic symbology of a degree of Freemasonry in exhaustive detail. It's important to understand 
that though it discusses Masonic rituals at length, it is written so as not to reveal the Masonic secrets. It's written very confusingly, and you can feel the evil coming off the pages. Ritual motions and objects are named and elaborated upon, but not described. It is not a book I recommend reading. Do not buy this book. In some older editions, the title page of the book declares in large old letters, esoteric book for Scottish Rite use only, to be returned upon withdrawal or death of recipient. Yeah, it's completely evil. But in the book, it does bring a lot of clarity about Freemasonry and what they believe. There is a lot of things that is mentioned in this book that I will bring to the light. Now again, please note, as we read, he explains things to keep most of their secrets and mysteries concealed. So do not get caught up in understanding every word. Remember, it's not for you to. Let's get to it. So I'm going to first jump to the end of the book to prove a point I made earlier in reference to Freemasonry deriving from the Templars. On page 820, when discussing the 31st degree, the book says, the end of the drama is well known and how Jacques de Molay and his fellows perished in the flames. But before his execution, the chief of the doomed order organized and instituted what afterward came to be called the occult, hermetic, or Scottish masonry. In the gloom of his prison, the Grand Master created four metropolitan lodges, at Naples for the east, at Edinburgh for the west, at Stockholm for the north, and at Paris for the south. Page 821. The order disappeared at once. Its estates and wealth were confiscated, and it seemed to have ceased to exist. Nevertheless, it lived under other names and governed by unknown chiefs, revealing itself only to those who, in passing through a series of degrees, had proven themselves worthy to be entrusted with the dangerous secret. The initiates, in fact, thought in the 18th century that their time had arrived some to found a new hierarchy, others to overturn all authority, and to press down all the summits of the social order under the levels of equality. You see, this clearly tells that Freemasonry is just a rebranding of the Templars. Now, it's important to know that in order to be a Freemason, you must believe in God. You just can't be an atheist and become a Mason. Now, whoever you want to call him and believe in, they don't care but you just must have a belief in a God. You must believe in a supreme being that's over you. On page 11, when discussing the first degree, the book says, the Holy Bible, square and compasses are not only styled the great lights and masonry, but they are also technically called the furniture of the lodge. And as you have seen, it is held that there is no lodge without them. This has sometimes been made a pretext for excluding Jews from our lodges because they cannot regard the New Testament as a holy book. The Bible is an indispensable part of the furniture of a Christian lodge, only because it is the sacred book of the Christian religion. The Hebrew Pentateuch, the Torah, in a Hebrew lodge, and the Quran in a Mohammedan one, belong on the altar. And one of these, and the square and compass properly understood, are the great lights by which a mason must walk and work. So. As we can see, religion is a huge part of this, obviously, because they're taking the major faiths and using their books as furniture of the lodge. But you can see that they already have embraced the one world religion. You must have a belief in God. As we keep going, we will understand why. There are so many points I could bring up from this book. Let's go back to my earlier point about Freemasonry going back to the ancient mystery religions. Like I said earlier, Freemasonry is just a rebranding of the ancient mystery religions. On page 23, when discussing the second degree, the book says, Though masonry is identical with the ancient mysteries, it is so only in this qualified sense that it presents but an imperfect image of their brilliancy, the ruins only of their grandeur, and a system that has experienced progressive alterations, the fruits of social events, political circumstances, and the ambitious imbecility of its improvers. After leaving Egypt, the mysteries were modified by the habits of the different nations among whom they were introduced, 
and especially by the religious systems of the countries into which they were transplanted. To maintain the established government, laws, and religion was the obligation of the initiate everywhere, and everywhere they were heritage of the priest, who were nowhere willing to make the common people co-proprietors with themselves of philosophical truth. Again, it's just the rebranding of the ancient mystery religions. Like I said earlier, Freemasonry is not just an organization, but it is a religion. True or false, Freemasonry is a religion. No, it's false. On page 213, in discussing the 13th degree, the book explains, Every Masonic Lodge is a temple of religion, and its teachings are instruction in religion. <laughs> That's very plain. This point is concealed from the general public who think of it only as a secular organization. He explains it more here. Going on page 219, discussing the 14th degree, the book explains, much of the Masonic secret manifests itself without speech revealing it to him who even partially comprehends all the degrees in proportion as he receives them. And particularly to those who advance to the highest degrees of the ancient and accepted Scottish rite. That rite raises a corner of the veil, even in the degree of apprentice, for it there declares that masonry is a worship. You see, masonry is a form of worship. It's really so deep. In the book, it also explains what the whole goal or end result is for them. On page 274, discussing the 17th degree, the book explains, Behold the object, the end, the result, of the great speculations and logomachies of antiquity, the ultimate annihilation of evil and restoration of man to his first estate by a redeemer, a messiah, a Christos, the incarnate word, reason, or power of deity. <laughs> wow, we're really getting warm. So their object or the end game for them is the annihilation of evil and restoration of man by a messiah figure. It gives more detail on page 287 on the 18th degree. You see, my brother, what is the meaning of Masonic light? You see why the east of the lodge, where the initial letter of the name of the deity overhangs the master, is the place of light. Light, as contradistinguished from darkness, is good, as contradistinguished from evil. And it is that light, the true knowledge of deity, the eternal good, for which Masons in all ages have sought. Still Masonry marches steadily onward toward that light that shines in the great distance. The light of that day when evil, overcome and vanquished, shall fade away and disappear forever, and life and light be the one law of the universe and its eternal harmony. The degree of rose teaches three things, the unity, immutability, and goodness of God the immortality of the soul, and the ultimate defeat and extinction of evil and wrong and sorrow by a redeemer or messiah yet to come, if he has not already appeared. Do you know what their ultimate defeat and extinction of evil is? To really answer that question, we need to clearly understand the God that they worship. Now, the book makes many references to the pagan gods and goddesses. But there are very clear statements made in the book that can tell you all that you need to know about Freemasonry. On page 321, discussing the 19th degree, they reveal who their God is. The apocalypse is, to those who receive the 19th degree, the apotheosis of that sublime faith which aspires to God alone and despises all the pomps and works of Lucifer. Lucifer, the light bearer. Strange and mysterious name to give to the spirit of darkness. Lucifer, the son of the morning. Is it he who bears the light and with its splendors, intolerable blinds, feeble, sensual, or selfish souls? Doubt it not. I rebuke that in the name of Yahshua. For traditions are full of divine revelations and inspirations. And inspiration is not of one age, nor of one creed. Plato and Philo also were inspired. Okay, there we have it. Lucifer is their God, and they are spreading his light to the world. That's why Lucifer means light bearer. They are help bearing his light. 
the ultimate defeat and extinction of evil is going back to Lucifer's whole agenda of being like the Most High and ascending to his heights. They believe that the true God of the Bible is evil, and their mission is to remove his influence from this world. If you follow this History of Religion series from part one, when we spoke about paganism, this goes back to that information. It also goes back to part five when we spoke about knowing our enemy. What we know is that this religion of Freemasonry is charged with spreading the light of Lucifer to the world. On page 328, when discussing the 20th degree, the book explains, The ancient and accepted Scottish rite of Masonry has now become what Masonry at first was meant to be, a teacher of great truths, inspired by an upright and enlightened reason, a firm and constant wisdom, and an affectionate and liberal philanthropy. And page 817, discussing the 30th degree, explains, All that will become the heritage of the temple the world will soon come to us for is sovereigns and pontiffs. We shall constitute the equilibrium of the universe and be rulers over the masters of the world. This is their plan. And when looking at the world the way it is now, from the way it was in 1872, when this book was made, it's very easy to see that their goal is being realized. And that is a great deal of background information on what Freemasonry is and what and who they believe in. They are the priests of this world that are directing it to a new world order. This topic is overwhelming because there are so many other points to cover. I will let Father lead me on where to go with it next. But if I impress anything upon you, I want you to know never to trust a Mason. Let me explain why. Just by the fact that they are a Mason means that they are able to keep secrets and are bound to them. They can lie to your face and never feel a way about it. They have taken oaths that supersede their family and obligation to our Father in Heaven. And you should know this if you have a father, a husband, an uncle, a friend that is a Freemason. Especially if you have a pastor that is a Freemason. And you will find that this is a huge occurrence in the black community. But I don't want to jump too fast. If your pastor is a Freemason, or you see a lot of Freemason symbols on license plates in your church parking lot, run from that church. There is a lot more to unveil, but most of it cannot be understood without understanding this topic first. When discussing this topic, Isaiah chapter 5 immediately comes to mind, like I'm sure it does with many of you. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. That's Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20. These men are pushing darkness to the world by calling it light. Woe to them. They believe that they are agents of light, though they are truly agents of darkness. Woe to them. The fact and truth is that they are on the opposite side of the battlefield, and because their secrets are so concealed, and many of us just walk in ignorance of the world that we live in, many of us have no idea of it at all. You see, the Bible has prepared us for this, though and told us that this is exactly what Satan will do. The Apostle Paul warned us in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 14 and 15. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. So what is Freemasonry? It is an organized religion tasked with the goal of spreading the light of Lucifer to the world. It desires to rebuild Solomon's temple and save humanity through their Messiah. It is a religion masked and covered by secrets and charity. They are agents of darkness masquerading as agents of light. This part of the world has been hidden from us and they have been covering up their intentions on bringing about their new world order and their false Messiah. And those that are following the lies of this world and moving in its direction are being led by them. It's important that you wake up and make sure you are not being led and steered by darkness. You must worship our Father in heaven in spirit and in truth and reject the lies and the blaspheme. Knowledge is power and that's why they have hidden themselves in the shadows. It keeps all of those who cannot see them without power. The goal of this ministry is to reverse this and keep the church ready for our Messiah's coming. Please stay ready and awake. 
Remember John's warning in his first epistle, chapter 4, verse 1. He says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of Elohim, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. After watching this, I'm sure you can see just how true and powerful that guidance is. Live through that warning and rest on our Father's word and live in his truth, holding on to righteousness and being a living witness and testimony of our Father in heaven. Believe fully in Yahshua HaMashiach and reject the false Messiah that is preparing to come. The time is absolutely now to live in the truth, but it is your choice. Who will you choose? Make the right decision and submit your life to Yahshua right now and be ready for him. Be blessed. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please make sure to like this and share it with others. If you have not already done so, please make sure to subscribe to this channel. Elohim willing, I upload every Friday. Don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram, as well as on my website, truthunedited.com. I want to thank everyone for all of the support of this ministry. I truly appreciate the prayers and support. All the messages of love and understanding are overwhelming and they truly bless me. As always, I want to thank all those who donate to this channel. Your donations are a sincere blessing to this ministry. I'm extremely appreciative for your love, offerings, and support. Thank you. Okay, everyone. Thanks again for watching. I love you all.